What's up guys, BR Gaming back at you again playing Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And guys, this is going to be one of the first how-to videos I'm going to be doing for this series. If you guys watched the previous episode, you guys know that this is something new I'm going to try and do to help you guys out and enjoy the adventuring. If you guys like this channel and you want to see it grow and join the adventuring family, make sure you guys subscribe. And if you find this video very helpful, Make sure you smash that thumbs up button and leave some comments in the section down below if I missed anything. But let's get to it. First video, how to cook in Breath of the Wild, guys. So, real quick, there's only a few things you need. There's two different things you can cook in Breath of the Wild, and that is dishes and elixirs. So, to be quite honest, the easiest way to do it is you just find a campfire, like so, which is right in front of me. Now... There's mostly campfires in every single stable you find, but you'll also find some random ones. Like the first one you'll find is right next to the Shrine of Resurrection. And then also there's one at the Old Man's Cabin, which you can also use for a side quest to get the warm doublet. But that is one of the first times you'll ever encounter the cooking pot. Now, there's not really any sort of hint on how to use the cooking pot. And there's not really like a recipe books or anything like that. So it's kind of trial by error. And 99% of the time, if you throw things into a cooking pot, you're going to get something out of it. But there is more details in it. So to get started, pretty much, just for cooking alone, we're going to start with cooking and then we're going to go to elixirs. So with cooking, there's multiple categories you can do to get certain dishes. Now, they range from hearty, energizing, enduring, fireproof, chilling, spicy, electro, hasty, sneaky, mighty, tough... Each one has its own bonus for that dish. So pretty much, for instance, if you make a chili uh, dish, it's going to resist heat, right? If you're going to do a mighty, it's going to increase your attack. Tough, increase defense, sneaky, stealthiness, hasty, movement speed, so on and so forth, guys. So let me just show you what I'm talking about. So we go in here. Now, there's a few things. For instance, let's start with this. So an apple, right? There's no sort of bonus that this gives you. It's just an apple. It only gives you half a heart if you eat it like this, right? Now, say I wanted to cook said apple, right? So you're going to press Y, and then you're going to add. So now you have one apple. Now that, when I cook it, for instance, like so, and we're going to skip some of these animations, it's going to give me a simmered fruit, which is pretty much just like a baked apple. Now, every time you add one, it doubles by 0.5, right? So... That half heart apple gave me one heart. Now if I hold, say, two apples, right? And you throw them into the pot. It's going to give me two. So I hope that makes sense. So every time it gives you half heart. So for instance, a palm. Or no, let's not do a palm. We'll do something that gives us a full heart. Um... Uh, well, we can do, uh, well, mm, let's do, no, 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 uh, okay, we'll just do a palm fruit, um, it doesn't, so as in the, in the description, it doesn't offer any special effects, but it will increase your heart recovery when used as an ingredient, so now this is one heart, right, so now we're gonna hold two, so that should give me two hearts, right, skip that, it doubles it by 0.5, so now it's giving me 7. And that was just also because there's also variance to it. So an apple is like grade E, right? A hardy Dorian is a higher kind of dish. So it gives you, it's a grade A. So it's a better ingredient because it's rarer to find and it's more money if you sell them. So it's a higher grade ingredient. So... With that being said, guys, now we get down to these, for instance. Now, cook it before eating to temporarily increase your stamina limit, right? So that's a stamina, or I'm sorry, an energizing um, dish. You come in to, say, a uh, stamella shroom. Stamina restoration properties. Uh, light, tinder, bitter, cold, zap shroom. 
protection against electricity. Now, mind you, there's multiple ingredients for each one of these types of dishes. So if I have, say, a, let's just go with this, an Enduro, so it's stamina. So it's a stamina type of dish. I cannot mix that with a Sunshroom. It will cancel out that effect. So what I could do is I can actually add it with this because it also has a stamina type property. Now, if I add these into a dish, like so, it will give me a mushroom skewer. Now, a good way to do all of this is say if I added, because that didn't actually do it, let's go ahead and add, say, a stamella shroom with a piece of raw prime meat. Let's just call it steak and mushrooms, right? Now, you see it gives us an energizing meat and mushroom skewer. And that is going to increase, instantly increase my stamina wheel. So that is a stamina related dish. Now, fold this and we'll go and we'll cook it with, uh, let's say, a piece of regular meat. And there it goes. It's going to temporarily give me extra stamina so the thing i actually kind of messed up was one was a stamina and one was an or one was an energizing dish which restores stamina and this is an enduring dish which gives me temporary extra stamina which is that yellow wheel so that is the main thing you can do now most of these also into not even just fruits and vegetables and stuff like that but you also have herbs that you can also increase too as well so this is a heat resistance this is a cold resistance. Uh, this should be stealth, I believe. Should be stealth resistant. Uh, blue night stream or nightshade is stealth. Sorry, uh, armoranth, which is for defense. So that is a tough dish. So if I hold this right, so say I hold one, and I do, let's just go with another piece of meat. Right, we'll go ahead and cook it up. And that's going to give me a tough steamed meat. And you see in that effect, it says 1 minute 20 seconds granted low level defense boost. Low level defense boost is because it is not that high of a grade. So now if we hold, say, 2, right? And we cook it with a raw bird thigh, which gives us one and a half hearts. We cook that together. And that is going to give me another low level because I'm still using a lower grade ingredient but it's going to actually increase the time that I have that defense. So the more of that specific ingredient with that special property cooked into a dish will increase your timed uh, effect. So now you can also use stuff like this. So Hylian rice, you can use coarse honey, which affects stamina recovery. Uh, you can use raw salt or rocks. I'm sorry, rock salt. And so you can hold, say, two of those, a uh, bird thigh, and then let's go ahead and do something we haven't done. Uh, let's go, we'll do stealth, and we'll hold five. So we'll have five items, right? Cook all that into a dish. Low level stealth boost, but it gave us six, right? So if we do that again, and we held, so two... Rock salts, we'll do a raw piece of raw meat and we'll only do one, right? So we're only doing one nightshade instead of two. It's gonna give me four minutes. Now, if I do that one more time and I do just a one blue nightshade and say just one, uh, we'll do raw prime meat, higher quality meat, but it's okay. It's only gonna give me two minutes, 30 seconds because I didn't use as many ingredients. So that is the difference, guys, is more ingredients also can affect how much you get back in return in that dish. Now, we have a lot of ingredients, which I can use. I have 41 hardy Dorians, and in a possible episode, I'll show you exactly the best places to get all of these. But this actually has a property, and it's going to temporarily increase your max hearts. So if we hold, say, two of these... I don't know, let's just say two, and we'll use a Hylian Shroom because it doesn't have any sort of uh, effect, but this has a hearty effect. So that is one of the meal types, hearty. 
So we use a hearty effect and say we just cook it with some apples which don't have any effects. So the reason I'm doing that is because this already has one of those effects. So now I can't, if unless I have other hearty dishes, I cannot mix a hearty dish with say a, st a stamina type dish or an en or energizing type dish, sorry. So we hold all these, right? And we cook these together. That is gonna give me a full recovery but that extra effect is that plus eight, which is giving me that temporary increased maximum hearts. So that is a hearty dish because it recovers all hearts and temporarily increases my hearts. That is the hearty dish. Now, just to reiterate, just to go down the line again, hearty recovers all hearts and temporarily increase uh, extra hearts. Energizing, restores stamina, enduring, temporary extra stamina, Fireproof resists the fire. Chili resists heat. Spicy resists cold. Electro less, uh, resists shock. Hasty increased movement speed. Sneaky increases stealthiness. Mighty increases attack. And tough increases defense. So that is the main way to cook things like this. And that's one main thing you can do. Again, we have a stealthy shroom so i could technically mix a stealthy shroom with a nightshade so you don't have to keep using only one certain type so say i only had one silent shroom and i'm like oh man i need five minutes worth of stam or uh, stealth i can actually change that and combine this with another thing that has a stealth property and then i will go and hold an apple because it does not have any sort of effect and I can cook that. And there you go, 8 minutes 30 seconds for uh, sneaky steamed mushrooms, even though there's apples in it, but whatever. But that is how you cook regular dishes. I hope that, guys, that clears a little bit up for your regular dishes. Now, moving on. Elixirs. Now, this is another type of thing. So meal, the only real difference kind of is there's not as many categories for elixirs. Now elixirs, there is, you cannot get confused and that's why I have my stuff sorted out. So this page and this page, these are all cooking for meals. These are meal pages pretty much. So I can make anything as long as they have the same category and effect. Or if I'm just having hearts and I just want hearts and I can cook, just say, a random fish. And that's it. You know, like, so you can cook these together. But for elixirs, you will not use any sort of these items. You will have to use a page. And it depends how, how many varieties and how much you have in your inventories. But you would use whatever page if you sort it. You have to use critters and you have to use monster parts. Now that is how you make elixirs is you connect the two and it's the same rule applies where you cannot mix different effects. So to start it off with elixirs, the categories also there's grade A's or B's and you can get different types and different effects uh, how long they last based off the grade of the ingredient based off the, the rarity and whatnot. But the categories for this is hasty, which movement speed up, sneaky, stealth up, mighty, attack up, tough, defense up, spicy, cold resistance, chilly, heat resistant, electro, shock resistant, and fireproof, which is a flame guard. Now, a lot of these elixirs will help you if you are trying to get somewhere where you have to buy the armor in that certain place, but getting there may be tough without it, which is kind of weird in the game. But you can do it that way if you are venturing and you haven't gotten the specific armor set to go into that area. You can use elixirs to balance that offset. So with that going over the categories, let's go right into the critters now. So you have a thunder wing, which is an electrical resistance. You have a cold dormer, which is heat resistance. Hot footed frog, for instance, speed boost, which is that hasty movement speed up. Uh, let's see what else um sunset firefly more quietly so that is a sneaky type uh stammer stamina recovery so that is a um another stamina type 
uh, electric dormer electric resistant so that's an electro elixir warm dormer cold you guys get it so forth and so forth speed boosting hasty uh hardy uh and fireproof so that is pretty much covers all the categories i said so now let's go ahead and get right into this so say i wanted to uh let's go uh fireproof for instance right so i'm going to hold a fireproof or I'm sorry, Fireproof Lizard, right? And I'm just going to go over here, and you can use any sort of uh, monster parts. Sorry. So, return to game. Cook those up. We're going to skip the animation. And we have a Fireproof Elixir. Grants a Fireproof Effect, which prevents your body from catching fire. So there you go. Fireproof Elixir, 4 minutes, 20 seconds. Right? Now we're going to go back. And we're going to take another fireproof lizard. We're going to just hold one for now. And this is going to be somewhat of the testing. So I use the Boko Goblin Fang. Boko Goblins are very easy to kill. But what happens if I use a Moblin Horn? Will I get the same type of resistance? 3 minutes 40 seconds. Now this is a perfect example of what I'm talking about with grades. So Boko Goblins are super common and they're easy to kill. Moblins, on the other hand, a little bit less common, still pretty common, but a little bit less, right? But they're harder to kill, which makes them a higher grade ingredient. So now if I go ahead and hold another one, and we're still just using one, guys. And I say I use two. Two monster parts. Will that make any sort of difference? It does. Four minutes, 50 seconds. Because I used two primary grade ingredients but now what happens if i hold say two fire elixir or fireproof lizards and i do uh one monster part for instance will that give me a bigger it does six minutes ten because i'm using more ingredients so you can either increase it based off of monster parts or you can increase the duration of the effect by using more of those critters. And just to show you guys again, say I use one and I come to Moblins, but I wanna say use a Moblin Fang instead, instead of a Moblin Horn. It will still give me that 40 minutes, 20 seconds as if I was using that Moblin Horn. And just one last time, might as well, because we don't really need them many. Say I use I don't know, Moblin Guts, for instance. Another thing that a Moblin has is still, but Moblin Guts are a little bit more rare because not all the times Moblins drop the Guts. So it depends off rarity, guys, and that is one of the main things, but it goes off of grade. And grade goes off of how rare or how often they drop. Moblin Guts typically don't get dries, and it even says in the description, a prized ingredient. You know what I mean? So, and then you have these Moblins, and they don't really say prize. They just say regular, you know, sharp fang obtained from a Moblin. But you can use it to craft monster parts. And that's one of the things that are a literal... You gotta kind of pay attention to. It's very complex, this game, so not many people actually know it. They just throw a bunch of stuff into a cooking pot, hope for the best, and they have stuff. And they're just like, cool, I got a bunch of dishes. But if you're really trying to target a specific effect for a certain area that you are going to adventure in, it is worth noting that you there is a uh, reason for the process. So now let's go ahead and uh, let's go. Let's see if I even have uh, resist cold. Um, I should have. No, that's heat resistance, electrical. All right, so. Speed boosting. I think I had another speed boosting, actually. Uh, or did I not? Speed boost. Okay, so same rule applies. So say I hold a hot-footed frog that draws out its speed boosting effect, and I want to use a high-tail lizard monster parts for a speed boosting elixir. I can use two of those because they have the same effect. They have that hasty effect. So it should be a hasty Let's just go uh, Lizalfos, for instance. Result, uh, Lizalfos Talon. 
because they both had the same effect, I have a hasty elixir, which is a movement speed up, and it is 10 minutes 40 seconds, guys. And that is going to be pretty awesome in terms of when we're actually trying to do certain things. So stamina recovery, let's hold a stamina recovery. Do I have another stamina recovery? I don't think so. Heat resistance, electrical, uh, that's a regular speed boosting, and this is maximum hearts. Okay, I don't, but so let's go ahead and hold two of them, right? And then we'll go over and we'll go, let's see, uh, electric key swing, fire key swing. Uh, don't really have anything like cool, cool. Oh, but I do have some of these, which is a Hinox toenail, which is actually pretty rare. So let's see what this happens here. Dubious? What? Wait, did I mix two things? I think I mixed two things by accident. Uh, let's try that one more time. I think I mixed uh, an electric with a restless. I don't know what I did. There we go. Electric elixir. Four minutes, 20 seconds. And that was just with one. So that is pretty, pretty nice. But let's go ahead and use two warmer Dorners. And just to show you again the grade difference, we'll use a Hinox toenail, which are very hard to kill, and they're also pretty rare. And we'll see, six minutes, 50 seconds. And then let's go back again, and we'll use two more, or no, I'm sorry, we'll, yeah, we'll use two more, and we'll use something as simple as a Boko Goblin Fang. Still a monster part, still works in elixirs. 11 minutes, 50 seconds. Wait, what? Did I use one or two of these things? I think I only used one, actually. Sorry. Uh, let's go Boko Goblin Fang. I think I only used one. I don't know why I used two. Four minutes, 20 seconds. So, it all depends on grade, guys. I hope this is very useful for you guys. If it is, make sure you guys put a comment in the section down below. Because I am going to be pretty much cooking a bunch of stuff uh risotto bows so we got egg corn stuff like that and we can use say i don't know that's a hearty radish i guess we can use a hearty radish there we go full recovery plus five and then we also have these two as well which are increased uh defense which because we're going into a divine beast we might as well use them uh big hearty truffle hearty hearty uh mighty banana now Movement speed. Uh, I could probably cook it with a fish, though. Temporary increases your defense. Resist cold. Temporary boost effect. Stamina. Okay, we'll just use a Hylian Bass. Because it doesn't have that different... Uh, it doesn't have a effect to it. And that's also kind of the rough thing, guys. Uh, strength, so we'll use... Two. Oh man, I ate him. Crap. Uh, I meant to hold. Uh, whatever. But this is one of the things, guys, too, is when you're adventuring around, it is important to get all these different things. Because if you only have things that have effects and you don't have any basic things like apples or, you know, uh, royal bass, it's going to be a lot harder to try and combine certain things. And that is actually a mid level defense boost, by the way. So it's going to be a little bit harder to find certain things, guys. And that is like one of the biggest things is when you don't have those basic ingredients and you guys are only hunting for things with certain properties, it could work out in your favor, but it could also not. And that's literally just because, you know, you can't mix and match certain things. So it's always nice actually to have those basic things that don't have any sort of uh, properties to them. And that is my personal preference but you guys can also have different things too like even that if you just mix two things say i have three apples and i want to throw in a rock salt and i want to throw in a highly uh, well we'll do it next one but you know these don't have any sort of boost so you just get regular hearts and sometimes that's okay too guys like you don't always need you know an effect sometimes you just want to use hearts because you're not really in a really big battle but you might be in a pinch because you fell off a cliff 
or you know you're only attacking one thing but it's getting it's kind of besting you in battle and you kind of don't want to use any sort of elixir because it's not worth it so you just want to get something that you know just gives you hearts and so that is also why getting basic ingredients without any effects are better for you guys but that's gonna be it and then look at all this guys uh when we get to it uh -huh, there we go look at all that like just from that we kind of fouled up once and i think that was just me trying to test something out but we have all of these elixirs and actually let's go ahead and sort them real quick there we go so we have all of our hearts and then we have more hearts and then we have energizing we have enduring we have hasty elixirs we have fireproof elixirs and then we have uh cold resistance arm or armor up electric and we have some stealth that i previously made like a while ago that i just never used again uh but yeah so that is how you guys cook in the amazing game of zelda breath in the wild i hope this tutorial helped you and this how-to is effective for you guys in your adventures if you guys do enjoy this and this did help you make sure you smash that thumbs up button and if you guys want to join the family and make this channel grow make sure you guys subscribe but that's gonna be it for this how-to and the next episode I publish will be us in the Divine Beast Va Meadow. So I'll see you guys there and we will eat all these elixirs and healthy, delicious meals. But until the next adventure, stay safe and stay hungry for more. See ya.